Welcome back to Trailblazers Courtside, everyone. It is a wet, crazy night out there in the Portland metro area, so uh, please do take it safely and slowly out there on the roads because it uh, it can be a little bit of a mess. Back to last night's game, uh, Damian Lillard did make a little bit of history in the loss to the Spurs. Became the seventh Blazer in franchise history to score at least 300 points or more in uh, the first 12 games of the season. Kiki Vanderway did it twice. Clyde did it. Jeff Petrie, Zach Randolph, Cliff Robinson, and Michael, no, Michael Holton did it. Uh, Sidney Wicks did. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, so a little silver lining, as we always like to do. All right, hey, pleased to be uh, going to the good old telephone and be joined by Trailblazers assistant coach Jay Triano, who's joining us from Houston. And, uh, Coach, we've talked about dealing, the process of dealing with a young team. There's going to be ebbs and flows, really, in every season. And I think right now the, the, the process of constantly learning to play in this system uh, with so many new team, teammates really does continue on. Despite this six-game losing streak that the team is currently on, where are you most encouraged with the the progress of this team right now? Well, I think, you know, we bounced back. I, I, I don't think we had a very good game in Charlotte at all. And I thought that uh, last night against the Spurs, and whether it was the opponent or the fact that we needed to uh, redeem ourselves from a poor performance defensively against Charlotte, uh, I thought that we competed at the defensive end. And, you know, uh, Coach Stotts has been, pre- you know, preaching from the beginning that we need to be a good defensive team, that our offense will find a way. And uh, last night was a perfect good example of that. You know, uh, offensively, we couldn't get things going, but we were able to stay in the game long enough because we played good defense and uh, challenged shots and forced them to, you know, take tough shots. And, and that kept us in the game and, until the third quarter when we were finally able to get our offense going. So, I think it, it, it's a process. So we've, we've talked about that from the beginning. Um, and I think that our guys have uh, done a pretty good job of trying to buy in. Uh, but, again, we're going to make mistakes, and we're going to have to stop them and show them and repeat it on video and show them again and uh, until this young group gets to, to fully understand what we're trying to get them to do. Coach, I'm always uh, amazed, even though I played a couple of days in the NBA, at how – Quickly, you got to process information from game to game and sometimes without being able to, to take the practice floor. When you're trying to develop consistency on the defensive end and, and, and create some easy baskets and you're dealing with uh, new personnel, new lineups, new matchups, and bringing a group of guys together, what are the most important components to, to getting that accomplished or challenges? Well, I think going through the experience of it mm-hmm. and playing different people and, and knowing and understanding like uh, – a guy like Ginobili last night, for example, who is so strong at moving and going to his left and trying to keep him and playing tendencies uh, that are somewhat different from game to game, uh, knowing when you're guarding a shooter and knowing when you, you're guarding a guy that wants to put it on the floor and try to drive past you. So th- those are things that uh, young players you know, grow to experience by going through it, the process. You don't... You don't it's hard to it's hard to replicate that in practice when you're playing against the same guys all the time. So I think that's the big thing. And I think if you go back like you know almost what three or four years ago, uh, we had the same group. We had Wes and and Nick and and, and Lamarcus. and uh, you know our defensive system changed, and we got better year by year because of the experience and having those players go through it over and over again. So, uh, we're going through that that learning curve now with our players, and, and they'll get better every game, and they'll get better as we as we progress through the season. Coach, when you talk about you know defense coming coming together defensively, there's a couple of things that come to mind. I just want to ask you about when you talk about those teams in the past that had come together and what it looks like for Blazer fans. I always felt like you guys were able to shrink the floor. Uh, whether you pin the ball on the sideline or whether you got guys with a foot in the lane and made people play around the fringes. Conceptually, what is the most important thing for this team to start to do that they will have some confidence in on the defensive end? I, I think the number one thing is try to keep the ball on one side of the floor. I mean, hmm. everybody's offense now is geared to changing sides of the floor and moving the basketball. But, you know, we, we've tried to preach, uh, you know, when the ball gets to one side of the floor, keep it on that side. Uh, have somebody sitting on the nail in the middle of the key have a big weak side big come in and, and really flood the side, make them throw skip passes to the other side where we have an opportunity to close out. And if they do throw that skip pass, then load to that side of the floor. So uh, that, that that's the key thing. But, you know, again, it, 
you start playing tendencies and you start playing left-handed, right-handed guys. And let's, let's face it, offenses in the NBA now are, are geared to, you know, the dribble handoff, which allows you to get a guy with momentum moving to the middle of the floor so that they're allowed to change sides of the floor. Blazers assistant coach Jay Triano joining us here on Trailblazers Courtside. Coach, there's going to be a lot of pressure, uh, and we've already seen that with Damian Lillard. And um, it's difficult sometimes for a player to have those kind of demands thrust on him. But what have you seen in his leadership qualities so far, taking on some youth and uh, even some other guys like Gerald Henderson? Still, it is Damian Lillard who's kind of really embraced what the challenges that might be in store for this season um, are the, that are ahead, right? Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing for for Damian is he's he's shown great patience. I mean, with uh, uh, you know to go from a team uh, like we had last year with veteran players on it to go with a young younger team, and he's really distributing the basketball. Uh, teams are, are gearing against him; they're putting two guys on him, making him give it up, and then they're not letting him get the ball back. Uh, but he's still willing to be a good teammate and share the basketball, get it into the middle of the floor, see if he can change sides, knowing that uh, it's going to be real tough for him to get the ball back. So uh, I think this is this is going to make him a better player. It's, 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 it's made him a better leader. And uh, I think, you know, as our young players grow, uh, you know, they're going to respect him a lot more because he's not really trying to do it all by himself. He, he's making sure that he gets others others involved. Coach, I love what uh, Terry Stotts has done so far uh, with this team, and uh, you, you never know who he's going to start, and it's always just the big secret right up until tip-off. But you got two bigs on the roster that are a mere 20 years old, of course, Cliff Alexander and Noah Vonley. Let's talk about Noah Vonley first for a second, who's been really a part of the rotation early on in this season. How has he grasped onto things so far in the system? You know what? I think you know it's been a, it's been a steep curve for him because he really hasn't had a lot of chances to play other than late in the season last year in Charlotte. Um, I thought last night was his best game. I thought, he, you know, he started to really feel a lot more comfortable out there. And that's something that's going to happen. Uh, the more that he plays, the more comfortable he's going to feel. And you're right, he's 20 years old. So, uh, what it was, you know, third, second, third year in, in, in college is where yeah, most right. guys 20 years old are. And, and, he, and he's thrown into the fire. Uh, like we were, we were talking last night, you go up there and guard Tim Duncan, let's go. And we we're trying to figure out how old he was when Tim Duncan started in the NBA. And, and it, it, you know, yeah. it was it was like, okay, but this is what the kid needs. He needs that. He needs to play against the veteran exper- guys. And I thought last night was one of his better games. I thought that uh, he started to let the game kind of fall into place for himself. And uh, we're, we're excited about his potential. We, we know that it's going to be a, a curve, but, um, you know, hopefully tomorrow night is, a, is another build on from what we saw last night. You know, last night we were laughing about it during the course of the broadcast because uh, Cliff Alexander, who we're going to touch on next, um, was guarding Tim Duncan. And I thought, oh, my, he's twice his age, Michael. I mean, he's yeah. 39. And Cliff Alexander, of course, just turned 20 yesterday. But uh, talk talk about Cliff Alexander, too. I love this guy's upside. This guy has just – he just looks like he wants to go out and absolutely punish people. He's physically so gifted. Um, just talk about his – how the learning curve, how he's kind of grasped onto the system, because there's going to be there's going to be errors. We know that, but the upside is huge. Well, absolutely, and and the errors are okay. I mean, you don't mind errors if they, if they, as long as they're doing it with energy, right? Um, um, and that's part of you know playing through mistakes. The game is full of mistakes. It's how you adapt and react to them. Uh, we we'll try to limit them through video sessions, and I, I think that's the one thing that's been really impressive uh, with Cliff so far is that uh, here's a guy who, you know, we challenge every day. We ask them questions. That, like, we'll, we'll put in three plays that maybe Houston is going to run tomorrow night. Hmm. And then we'll challenge him at the end of practice and say, what were the name of those three plays? And Cliff has it every single time. Nice. He hasn't let us down once. And, and it just shows that he's paying attention. And, and that started from from day one when, you know, maybe he wasn't in the lineup or he wasn't even dressing for a few games. And sure enough, he you know, he was always prepared, knew what was going on. Uh, he's really tried to understand what we're trying to do offensively, and and, and Coach Stotts has a, you know more of a complicated offensive and defensive game plan than most coaches in the NBA. So it takes a little bit of time to grasp it, but uh, we've been impressed with how how fast Cliff is uh, really kind of you know fit into the system that we're trying to you know 
uh, replicate here from the years past. Hmm. You know, Coach, obviously Damian and uh, and CJ have been phenomenal offensively uh, thus far in the season. And I've been kind of thinking and wondering who the third score would be or did this team need a third score. But I want to ask you about Mason Plumley because I've observed something in the last couple of games that looks like lightning in a bottle to me. I want to see how you feel about it. His screen roll game in the middle of the floor and ability to catch the ball on the move and the roll and reverse it, it seems like it really breaks down defenses. Absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, that's a big uh, point of contention for us is that when we get a screen roll on one side of the floor, and you know, you know let's face it, we know what teams are trying to do. They're trying to put two guys on Damian. They're trying to put two guys on CJ. So if we can get the ball out of their screen and roll actions and move it to the weak side of the floor, we know we're going to get good looks. And, and Nathan not only has the ability to pass the ball weak side, but he has the ability to catch in the lane and, and, and maybe attack at times as well. But you know, his passing ability has allowed us to put in a new offensive set where we actually give him the ball in the middle of the floor at the top and let him decide what he wants to do. Does he want to, you know, dri- dribble hand off one side? Does he want to pass it, follow, and set a screen? And we think that that's an advantage for us because if he's handling the ball, it means it's a few less possessions that Damian and CJ have to handle it, but they're still going to get it because of the DHOs that are coming off, it, off either side. Blazers assistant Jay Triano joining us from Houston as the Trailblazers get ready to take on the uh, Houston Rockets tomorrow in the finale of this road trip. Uh, the Houston Rockets, Coach, have also lost four straight. Um, what do you know? About, first of all, what, what is going on with that team, and what have you scouted against them? They're they're kind of like a caged animal right now. They can break out at any time. I know that you've probably warned your team of that, but what is going on with the Houston Rockets, and how do you guys uh, go after them tomorrow? Well, I mean, it's, it's interesting. There, are, you know, I guess they had a players-only meeting mm-hmm. today, and you know, you never know how those are gonna how those are gonna come out, and you know whether it's it creates more animosity or whether, it, but they just don't seem to be on the same page. We were talking to uh, the Boston Celtics, who were still in the hotel here last night when we arrived uh, after playing the Rockets, and, and they said that you know this team just kind of quit in the second half, and mm-hmm. um, it, you know. That doesn't happen for long in the NBA. Teams go through spells, and, uh, you know, everybody's got their own problems, and obviously they're going through one right now, but teams break out of those, and you want to make sure that tomorrow night isn't the time that they break out of it. So, you know, we can't give them easy baskets. We can't make uh, poor plays offensively and, and, and turn the ball over where it creates easy baskets and give them any kind of confidence or any kind of uh, forum to come together as a group. So, um, it, you know, it's a tough place to come in and play when a team is playing playing very very poorly because you know that it's not going to last forever, especially with the talent that they have on their team. Well, every day is an opportunity. We always say that, and um, tomorrow will be another one for the Trailblazers as they take on the Houston Rockets down at the Toyota Center. Coach, thank you so much for the time. We always do appreciate it, and we love your insight. Thank you. All right. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks. All right. Take care. Jay Triano, Blazers assistant coach, joining us from Houston. All right. We're going to take the time out. When we get back, we will have Casey Holdall, Trailblazers digital beat reporter. I got to get the exact title down for him. I think he's Blazers beat reporter. I know this much. He's a media mogul. I know you've called him three or four things, so let's ask him and get it straight. (laughs) We'll get that next here on Trailblazers Courtside. Stick around.